Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here in TNO, the last days of Europe in which we're going to explore the Imperial Airborne Brigades. The remnants of the Regency's Air Force never quite as politicized as the army. With the collapse of the Central Authority and its ranks filled with particularly nasty men under the rule of the commander, Ivan Melkik, they've decided to make out like bandits and looting and pillage the north of Russia using their massive helicopter fleet. They fled north to the oil fields near the Arctic Circle, establishing themselves as a force of airborne raiders who lived to pillage and plunder with impunity, still waving the flag of the regent for the slightest facade of legitimacy. And of course we are led, like I said, by Melkik, who has a very cool flag. Ivan, Ivan, Ivan. If you'd like to read about him, please go right ahead. Please, please, please. By the coming storm, the suffocating blanket of darkness that had settled over Siberia, over Russia, was pierced by a single glowing ember. It glowed softly as Milkik puffed on a cigarette, and the smoke billowing from his nostrils as he ex exhaled. He watched the tendrils of grey nothing dance like ghosts in the cold Siberian air, and he smiled. Ghosts! Russia was full of them, but Milkik was not one of them, and neither were his men. If Milkik could use one word to describe the Russian race, it would be survivors. They had outlived the Tsar, the Nazis, and now the Blessed Regent. He sneered at the very least one of the Blessed Regents. Larionov was making noise in Vyaka, screaming at Milkik down the phone to organize the heads helicopters and planes in defense of the city. The commander the Imperial Airborne Brigades knew an opportunity when he saw one, and Larinov's Frankenstonian state was not long for this world. Out here in the Siberian wastes, he alone commanded air power, he alone had the guns and guts to take what he wanted. Screw the regent, screw the empire, Milkik was the king of the sky, as one by one the blades of the helicopters began to spin, the engines humming as the raptors prepared for takeoff, and as Milkik stood watching his warriors ascend into the air, a smile crept across his face. Milkik was not just a survivor, but a predator as well. Of course, he's a despotist, we also have support for authoritarian democracy, a conservative democracy, a liberal democracy, Putyatin, huh? Cool. As well as authoritarian socialism under Chibisov. But like a lightning. Lidka threw herself to the ground as the plane screamed overhead, throwing up snow as she collapsed, clasps her hands over the back of her head. Bullets ripped through shacks and burst bodies and bright puffs, puffs of pink mist. The Hetman had refused to pay tribute to the air marshal, now he was murdering them. A shrieking dive bomber swooped low over the town, dropping its payload over the village square in a sudden terrible moment. Everything was light, heat, and noise. Litka did not realize she was screaming until her throat was raw, splinters, earth, and flesh were rent and thrown wildly by the explosion, and Litka felt a wave of heat thrown from her prone position into the air. She landed at her back some yards away, and the wind torn from her lungs. As she struggled to breathe, she watched as the death machines wheeled overhead. What could they do? A few brave souls had fired their rifles at the planes to no avail, but their bodies quickly turned to wet scraps at the next strafe. Litka tried to push herself back up, but her limbs were unresponsive. She struggled to lift her head, hair, blood, and sweat clinging to her face. What remains of her body was a horror, a mass of charred meat and splintered bone, another casualty of Milkik's rage. Litka sunk back, shock quickly taking over her last thoughts of her mother. To become a crater is the fate of those who refuse the air marshal. Oh boy. And we do the natural spirit, the Sky Reavers, which looks pretty cool. Oh, we got some anti-tank too. Academic base, nice. Power tools, but the black wall. The throaty roar of the double-A guns and the chopping of his propeller flooded Kolomonikov's perception. Blocking out all other stimuli as the raging sound beat against his mind, the attack wing swept low over the bunker complex, probing for an opening in the redeemed Black League's defenses. There were none, though. The fanatics held fast against the Imperial Airborne Brigades, their entrenched double-A guns, spitting showers of deering... Dirig into the sky. The gunner of the Kolomonikov's chopper, a crazed, fearful expression on his face, pumped lead down on the gun emplacements, desperately trying to pick off the Black League defenders. Maybe the guns could be neutralized. The gunner howled and careened back, clutching his face and screaming his blood gouged from his jaw. Instinctually, Kolomonikov slept over the fallen gunner to take his place, gripping the machine gun in his sweaty hands. Just as he began to return fire down to the black garbled figures that guarded the concrete hellscape, and his casings pinged and rattled around his feet, Kolomonikov felt his mouth dry and his bowels turned to water as an anti-air gun turned towards his chopper. The flak tore through the soft skin of the helicopter with ease like a giant punching a fly. The cabin shook violently and as Kolomonikov... Kolomonikov was thrown from his feet as the chopper began his death spiral in a swirl of sound and blurred colors. Kolomonikov was tossed around the cabin only the grace of centripetal, centripetal force keeping him inside the helicopter. The howl of tortured metal and the kinetic scream of impact greeted Kolomonikov as his chariot met the earth rising 
glass and wreckage showering him and those few who had survived the crash. Pain greeted him, searing, agonizing pain as he struggled to right himself and extract his limp body from the wreckage. As he glanced out the grumpled door of the chopper, he felt as though he might cry. Rushing through the trench, the chopper had fallen into were the soldiers of the Black League, rifles at the ready. His pistol was nowhere to be found and Kolomonikov prayed that he would not be taken alive. Today, the redeemed Black League earned their right to refuse. Oh boy. Now let's see, outdated research. Oh, China modernizes. Good job, China. Zimbabwe. Cool. Nothing else. No other improvements. Ah, expertise is going up slightly, ever so slightly. But, riders on the storm. Ahab Mostia Melikic had waved away the reports weeks back. It was preposterous to think that something as mundane as weather could stop his fleet. The helicopter fleet had been winterized in preparation for raids deep into Siberia long before the collapse of the Holy Russian Empire, and not once had the chopper horde been grounded. Melikic would not suffer the disobedience of Mother Nature, and no weather report would discourage him from taking what was rightfully his. That had been weeks ago, and now the company had embarked for a raid into Nenet territory, was lost in perpetual white. Chopper pilots strained to see through the driving snow of the blizzard, holding their controls in white knuckle death grips. None dared to turn back, for to return to the air marshal without loot was to face summary execution. The wind and snow wrecked havoc on the blades, and the first chopper that was pushed down to earth by the hoary hands of Boreas landed with a dull crump. The distress of the stricken crew was heard over the radios of the squadron, who initially believed that the Ninets had acquired a rocket. As one chopper scrambled to face a non-existent enemy, it blundered blindly into its brothers, sending them both careening to the ground in a sudden bright orange fireball. When the Ninets scouts found the wreckage, there was no sign of the crew, save for the few corpses frozen solid by the icy winds of Siberia, and the wolf tracks leading off into the forest. Mother Nature tolerates no egoists. Actually, quite a few factories here. A lot of civvies. Wow. Ivan, Ivan, Ivan. Are we going to re raid the trans Euro people next? Clash of wings. A bomber exploded in midair, its payload detonating internally, spraying the rest of the aerial fleet with deadly shrapnel. Fighters darted in and out of the bomber formation. The few fighters in Melkik's fleet scrambling to intercept. Choppers and bombers burst with throaty explosions or trail smoke as they crash into the Euros below. Where the bad word did they come from? Shouted the air marshal from his chopper, watching through the canopy in disbelief as the swooping fighters tore into his precious fleet. There had to be at least a dozen of them. All older Soviet planes, proudly emblazoned with the red star of the old Union. The fighters, long-time heroes of Siberia, were un unmistakable. The free aviators. Nice. Helicopters fired mounted machine guns fruitlessly at the passing fighters. The free aviators easily spinning to avoid the tra line of tracers. Milikic's gunner was shoved off the gun by the air marshal himself, who grasped the machine gun and swung it towards his enemy. The gun shook, bright tracer rounds illuminating the night sky, seeking the death of the witches. A Soviet plane careened to the left as Milikic riddled its left wing with bullets, smoke trailing from behind the stricken fighters. All around the aerial duelists, an explosion shook as the sky as riders and free aviators killed and died alike. As choppers fell from the sky and bombers exploded midair, Melikic felt his gun cough, the last of the casings clinking to the floor. Bad word! The air marshal shouted, dismounting the weapon. A cold sweat began to percolate on his brow as he slowly came to the realization that the fight was hopeless. Pull back, return to base, screamed Melikic down the radio as one, the fleet t returned to flee. Though they were harassed the whole way back, the free aviators peeled off shortly before the fleet touched down. Melikic was incensed. Coming off of his chopper, ranting and raving. I, he screamed to the raider, I am alone, the master of Russia's skies. When this is finished, the free aviators will be forgotten, and he who speaks their names will be thrown from a helicopter. The raider stared in disbelief. The air marshal has lost his mind. But that was very interesting that we get little glimpses of the interactions that this warlord has with the with its neighbors. But that shall conclude this video regarding the Imperial Airborne Brigades. If you liked it, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in a different video. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.